Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to talk about programming again, specifically programming configuration variables. And I'm going to focus in on the first eight, the basic eight is what I call them. And these are the most important CVs and the ones that you'll be using probably 90% of the time. So let me go ahead and get things set up and we'll get started. But before I get started, I want to remind you one more time, hit the little red subscribe button here uh, on the right hand side of your screen and subscribe to the channel. Right now we're over 800, heading for 900, and hopefully by the first of the year we'll be seeing 1,000. So go ahead, line up your neighbors, your friends, your dog, your cat, your children, everybody you know. Tell them, subscribe to the DCC Guide and get me over a thousand. Thanks a lot now. Let's get started. Okay, to be able to show you exactly what I'm doing, I've set up a locomotive on a programming track here. Okay, so this is the setup. I've put, a, uh, put the Bachman uh, Light Mountain locomotive that I showed you how to lubricate on the programming track, and it's hooked up to the uh, uh, NCE power cab that I showed you in a previous video as well. And I'll add links to those videos here uh, above me so that you can find them quickly if you haven't seen them already. And I'm going to run through the, the basic eight CVs and show you how to program them using the power cap. Uh, I want to go ahead and get started now uh, talking about what I call the basic CVs, the first eight. And those are the ones that you're going to be using a lot of the time. Uh, most decoders, sound decoders in particular today, can have hundreds of, of CVs, but you're going to rarely be using those. Okay? For the most part, you're going to be doing things like changing the address, changing the momentum rates, the brake, um, all kinds of things of this nature. So I want to go ahead and go through those first eight because those are the ones that you'll be using to do these kind of programming changes. Now, to make these changes, I'm going to be, like I said, using the uh, power cab from NCE, and we'll go ahead and get started with CV1. Now CV1 is the two-digit address. Uh, it comes from the factory. All decoders are preset at the factory with an address of three. And that's done because it's required by the NMRA standards and RPs. And it allows everyone, when they buy a new locomotive, to know that they can put it on the track and crank it up, and it will respond to a throttle address of 03. It also means that if you're using programming on the main, that you can make changes to address 03. The important thing about this, though, is be aware of that because you don't want to have any other locomotives on your layout uh, that will respond to 03. So you need to change your address uh, to a four-digit address initially and set it up so that that four-digit address is active. And get away from using the two-digit address. You know, you can use something else. You could use eight. You can use ten. You can use a hundred. Whatever you want to use uh, in that two-digit address, you can use it as long as you get away from using 03. Because otherwise, if you start programming a, lo a new locomotive, to address 03 using ops mode, uh, you're going to reprogram any other locomotives that are still set to respond to address 03. Now, they can still have 03 in the two-digit address as long as they are set up to respond to a four-digit address. It won't matter. So I hope that's clear. It's a lot to say in one short take there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, I want to show you how to, easy it is to program uh, the locomotive to a new address. Particularly, on, this is on the service mode track, you could do it also. Most decoders now, you can program, reprogram the addresses uh, on the main line as well using ops mode. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hit program here on the throttle. And it'll be different on your throttle, but go ahead and, and you know, you'll, you've read the instructions, I hope, and you know how to do it. Uh, 
And so it asked me, do I want to program on the main? And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to program on the programming track. So if I hit a value of 4, that takes me to use program track. Okay, so that's what I want to do. So I'm going to hit enter there. And it's asking me, do I want to use standard CV or register mode programming? I'm going to enter CV mode. So enter a value of 2. And then it asks me, which CV do I want to change? Okay, I'm going to enter a value of 1, because that's what we want. And then hit enter. And you'll see it has come up with a value of 03. So it read the decoder in the locomotive that I showed you earlier, and it knows that it's set for 03 at CV1. Okay, so you know we can change that. Uh, put in 4 right here. You can see I've done that. And then just hit enter. Okay, and it, record, it, it changes that CV in the locomotive, and we can now move on to another CV, since it's asking me that. Okay, let's move on to CV2. I'm going to enter 2 in here and bring it up. And you can see it comes up with a value of 0. And that's what's stored in this locomotive. Now I could enter any value I want, 3, 4, 10, whatever. But right now it responds well at a value of 0. Now CV2 is your starting voltage. And that, val that CV allows you to adjust the initial voltage that's supplied to the locomotive motor when you start opening up the throttle at speed step 1. So if you want your locomotives to just crawl as soon as you open up to speed step 1, this is the one you adjust. So you can keep increasing that value until the locomotive just starts to move. And that's where the virtual throttle approach uh, comes in real handy because you can change it, test it, change it, test it over and over again until you find the value that you like. Okay, I'm going to move on now. Oh, let me point out too, that CV2, that initial uh, speed, that uh, is used also in the uh, three-point uh, speed curves that I went over in how to speed match locomotives. So I'll, I'll show you those uh, as well. Two, five, and six are the CVs that are used for that. And I'll talk about each one of those in order. So you know now that CV2 allows you to adjust the initial uh, starting speed of the locomotive when you first open up the throttle. Okay, so now let's go ahead. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to, you know, go to z uh, zero again. So now let's go ahead to CV th uh, CV3. Okay, so I'm entering CV3 and it says wait while it reads it and it comes back and it tells me it's a value of 20 stored there. Uh, CV3 is your uh, momentum on acceleration. Okay, So the larger this value, the longer the delay. So for a steam locomotive, uh, they're going to start slower. Okay, Some locomotives will, the prototypes, will just start up slower because they've got you know, smaller wheels, different gearing, whatever. And this allows you then to adjust that initial acceleration rate. And again, this is one of those where you put in a value, store it, and then test it and see if you like that value. And you keep increasing or decreasing that CV setting to get the acceleration rate that you want. Okay, So I'm going to stick with the value of 20. And we'll hit Enter. And it's going to program it. Now, let's go to CV4. So I'm going to enter CV4 here and hit Enter. And it's going to tell me to wait again while it reads what's in the decoder. And it's come back with a value of 60. Now CV4 is your deceleration rate. So as you start cranking back on the throttle and go down towards zero, the locomotive will slow down at a different speed, different rate, depending on the value that's stored in CV4. So you can make it uh, look like the locomotive is, you know, slowly creeping down to its uh, to the speed that you want it to stop at. Um, because of the momentum of the weight of a locomotive and in its train, you can adjust this on the fly even so that you're replicating a locomotive that is pulling a train a mile long and is pushing it <laughs> once it gets started. And, and, and it gives you that momentum effect built in. So it's a nice feature. Okay, okay so let's go ahead. I'm going to hit Enter, and it's going to program 60 into CV4. 
Okay, let's go ahead and talk about CV5. Uh, CV5 is the uh, top of the speed curve. Okay, um, it has a maximum value of 255, and that gives you the maximum voltage at the top of the speed curve at speed step 28 or 128, depending on what you have your decoder set for. So when you enter that, you have the bottom of the speed curve at uh, CV2. Uh, speed step one, and then you have the top of the curve with CV5. We'll get to the middle in a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, and enter CV5. Basically, like all the rest, I'm going to hit program and go immediately to using the program track and hit enter. And that's going to bring up uh, the choice of CV. So I'm going to select CV programming and I'm going to enter a value of five. And so it pulled up a value of uh, 255 in that position. Okay, so that gives me, as I said, uh, full voltage at the top of the curve. Now, if you have a locomotive that maxes out on a much lower speed, one thing you can do is cut it back. Okay, cut it back to 200, and that way you're basically putting a governor on the maximum speed that that locomotive can go because you're setting the decoder at significantly less than the full output voltage. So that's one thing you can use it for. Also, as I said, it's the top of the speed curve. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about speed curves in just a second when we get to six. But for now, that's a value of 255, and that's what I'm going to stick with at this point. Okay, so. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it's going to store it uh, into the CV. Okay, so CV5 then is the top of the speed curve. So how do you set the middle? Okay, because you need three steps. Well, you could have a, a bottom and a top and a linear in between, but in some cases though, you're going to want a midpoint value in there to get an inflection in your curve um, because locomotives don't always respond linearly. They might speed up very quickly at first and then plateau out, or they might slowly uh, increase in speed and then take off. And that's what the three speed step uh, approach allows you to do. And I suggest I've, I'll add a link above here to that video on speed matching that explains how to set up a three step speed curve using CVs 2, 5, and 6. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, look at program uh, programming CV6, which is the midpoint. And I know, why didn't they set it up so it's 5 being the midpoint and 6 being the top as opposed to the reverse? I don't know. I wasn't on the NMRA committee that set this up. That's just the way they did it. Um, okay, so I've entered CV6 in here. Let's hit. And it's coming up also with a value of 0. Now, if I want a linear speed curve um, at 255, we're talking about 127. So I'm going to enter a value of 127 in here, okay, for CV6, which is going to give me a three-point speed curve, uh, one value at the bottom, one at the top, and then one midpoint along that curve. So that's exactly how it works. You've got three points determining a straight line in this case, okay? So let's go ahead, let's take another one. We've done six. Let's look at CV7. And I'll tell you what that is. Okay, it's come up with 04. Okay, CV7 is a read-only CV, so you won't use it that much. And what it tells you is the decoder version, okay? And it's something that the manufacturer programs into the, uh, into the decoder, and it, it allows Decoder Pro and, and other devices to be able to read the decoder and know which version of the software, which version of the decoder uh, is being displayed and used. Okay, so that's all that it's used for. Now, um, let's go ahead with uh, CV8. Uh, I'm going to hit enter a value of 8, and we're going to read that one. Now it's, it's searching. It's giving me a long wait here. So while it's trying to read it, I'll tell you what it is. CV8 is the manufacturer's ID. 
So in this case, it's 153, which is a TCS uh, decoder, which is what this is. And that allows Decoder Pro to know which decoder it's it, uh, company uh, made that decoder and that displays on Decoder Pro when you uh, open up the, the basic CVs and when you try to program or add a new decoder. Um, so that's only the thing that, that, um, that they use it for. They enter a value of 153 at the factory uh, at, uh, when they make a TCS decoder so that you know, the software can um, check it and find out who made that decoder. Now, there is one other thing that you can use the uh, CV84, and I'm not going to do it because I, I don't want to. I don't want to change things here. But basically, entering a value of eight into CV8, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to hit enter. So if I enter a value of eight into a CV8, it will reset the locomotive decoder to its factory settings. And this is a very very useful thing to have. The reason for that is it's very easy on the on, on operations uh, on your layout. Occasionally you'll get shorts where somebody runs through a closed switch or you know runs across some, some points and uh, derails or whatever and causes a momentary short on the track. And those kind of things can change CV values in locomotives. And if you get one that's not behaving properly, then all you have to do is enter a value of 8 into CV8 and it will set it back to the original factory standards. That means you lose all the changes that you've made, but at least you get the decoder working properly again. I had to do it on this uh, Light Mountain just the other day after I had gone through all the uh, changes that I made uh, after, after doing the uh, lubing exercise with it. And at some point uh, during that process, something got screwed up with the back EMF settings and it wasn't working right. So the easiest thing to do for me was to go ahead, reset it to factory standards, and because I had every change that I had made to that decoder stored in Decoder Pro, I was able to reprogram it really quickly uh, because I could just bring those settings up off of the hard disk and send them out to the locomotive uh, on the programming track and reprogram it to the way I had originally uh, set it up. So that's one of those big values of using Decoder Pro. So I suggest go ahead, go back. I've, I'll add another link uh, on here somewhere to Decoder Pro uh, videos so you can go back and check those out because they're, it's, it's a great resource. I do all of my programming almost doing using Decoder Pro. I mean, the one thing I don't do is speed matching and, um, you know, it's just easier to do it using Opsmo because you have to keep making changes over and over and over again. So review that uh, video on speed matching as well. Um, okay, so that gets us through the first eight uh, CVs. Everything of, uh, above that um, gets a little bit more complicated and it's probably not something you're going to be using that much anyway. Um, the other one, though, that I will talk about in another video after this one is CV29. CV29 has always been called the master variable, and it controls several important functions on your decoders, and I'll get into that in the next video. So, have a great week, and enjoy the videos. Thanks a lot for subscribing, and um, when the image of me pops up right here, if you haven't subscribed already, you can click on that image, and it will take you to another uh, uh, subscribe button that you can go ahead and subscribe uh, to the channel. So enjoy the videos that I've added links to above me here, and keep watching, and uh, keep uh, subscribing to the channel. Thanks a lot now.